There's a lot of talk about increasing expenditure on campaigning, but lobbying is actually where the, you know, the big money in politics is. So the revolving door basically describes this idea that people move from politics into the private sector and that they potentially make gains out of their political experience in government and they could also have a role in sort of undermining good policy uh, because of their former experience. We're careful about banding around allegations of corruption or, or arguing that our study looks at corruption, mainly because we don't have the lawyers. <laughs> The earlier research in this area is mainly focused on the politicians uh, going, moving from uh, uh, politics and working and lobbying or in the corporate sector. What we focus on in our paper is this larger class of former political staffers. So for example, people who worked as a chief of staff to a major senator. So the revolving door describes the, you know, the way that these staffers move into the private sector in either the corporate sector or into lobbying and sometimes they move back to work in politics. Uh, a lot of people argue that yes, this is something we should be troubled by in the sense that the information that these lobbyists have gained as part of their political employment can be considered as sort of insider information on how the policy process works. And in particular, insider information on gaining access to politicians. So the concern here is that uh, by using this you know, information, these contacts and this internal knowledge of how the political process works, that particular special interests can buy uh, privileged access to the political process and ha can have a major advantage in, in sort of gaining the policy outcomes that they want and that these policy outcomes may not be compatible with you know, what's best for the welfare of, of society. Uh, what we're doing in this paper is specifically looking at the role that political connections have in influencing the revenues or you know the proxy salaries of lobbyists. If you look at the sort of argument that lobbyists make in terms of defending their, pr their profession, they say that uh, their, you know, the, the high revenues or, or salaries that they get out of lobbying actually reflects their underlying ability. To estimate the impact of you know, political connections on this proxy salary or revenues, we need to separate you know, the effect of the connection from the effect of the lobbyist's underlying ability. Okay, and so this is a major econometric issue and this is something that you know, we bring to the literature or to the discussion that you know, journalists have, have been unable to. And the way that we do this in our paper is we look at the effect of a change in political conditions. In the case of, let's say, someone who worked as a junior staffer for a senator. So our identification strategy relies on the idea that political conditions change. So if the senator leaves office while that former staffer is working in lobbying, then that connection to a senator becomes obsolete. This lobbyist doesn't have access to you know, a sitting politician uh, who can vote on bills and can make speeches on bills. Uh, so that's, that's where we make a contribution in terms of separating out the, imp the effect of ability from the effect of political connections. Um, so if you look at our estimates, in terms of this transition, in terms of a politician leaving office, uh, this has a 20% effect on lobbyist revenues. So their revenues fall by about 20% in this immediate transition period. Uh, our estimates are potentially the tip of the iceberg in terms of the, the contribution of these connections of access to, to, to lobbyist revenues. Uh, what I think largely you know, we contribute is we actually add to what Open Secrets and other organisations such as Legistorm have been doing in terms of enhancing political transparency and enhancing the scrutiny of the political process. Our study makes use of data that's been released under the Lobbying Disclosure Act, but uh, this, you know, an important part of the processing of this data and, and the availability of this data uh, has been taken up by these transparency watchdogs in Washington. The type of work that we've done in this paper in terms of looking at the revenues or you know, proxy salaries of lobbyists cannot be done in, in, in Europe or cannot be done in the UK because the data is, has just not been released. And you know, one, one sort of argument we're making very strongly is that you know, as part of their commitment to political reform, the major political par parties need to make a commitment to a transparent sort of reporting of lobbying activity in the UK. But I think there needs to be real and tangible moves uh, towards a disclosure regime. And once you know, the information is out there, it completely changes the game. You know, so on MPs' expenses, that completely changed uh, you know, 
the way Westminster was run in terms of its internal operations sure. and the way people perceive politics.